How does Amazon get away with paying no income tax? But more importantly, how can we do about the same thing? In this video, I'm going to explain what we can learn from Amazon and how we can use that to save massive amounts on our own taxes. Yes, you can use the same strategies that the rich and the huge giant corporations use to save hundreds of billions of dollars. And I'm going to show you exactly how. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So if you're new to the channel, we talk about business, investing, success, talk about making money, investing money, talk a lot about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, I, what I believe are the best opportunities to make money today. But today we're talking about taxes. More importantly, how you can save money on taxes because um, you know, penny saved is a penny earned. If you can save money, it's like making money. And the taxes are your single biggest expense. Depending on how much money you make, it could be 30, 40, 50% of your income or more. And so if we can save that, that's massive. Now, digging into this, first of all, like I started out with is what can we learn from Amazon? That massive company paid no federal income tax on more than 11 billion in profits in 2018. Amazon paid no federal income taxes. Now, I didn't say no taxes. I said no federal income taxes last year. But people are outraged. They're outraged by this. How could a company so big, worth a trillion dollars or whatever, how could they pay no taxes? And they demand that these loopholes be closed up and that Amazon should pay their fair share and all these other things. And I'm not here to dive into the politics of this. Um, I just want to look at how do they do it? What, what principles do they use and how can we apply the same thing? So if you want to know that, then, then let's go through this. So the first thing that you need to do to understand this is you need to change the way you think, change the way you look at this. Now I've talked a lot about like paradigm shifts and that's when, you know, two people can look at the exact same thing, but see something different. And so you need to have a paradigm shift on this. So you need to look at taxes and the government as something you probably don't want, but you need to, and that is the government is your partner. Yeah, whether you want them or two or not, they're your partner. It's like uh, if you want to start a business and you went in with a partner and you know they take half the profits, you take half the profits, that's basically what the government does. They take 30, 40, 50% of the profits. The more money you make, the more money they make. So they're your partner, whether you like it or not. And the reason why it's important to understand that is because when you start to look at them as a partner, then you understand that they're aligned with your uh, goals, right? Like I said, the more money you make, the more money they make. And they give you um, they give you clear instructions on what they want you to do with the business. And they even give you incentives to do those things. And that's where that big shift comes in. So they're really doing what uh, a lot of politicians wish more companies would do. Could lowering America's corporate tax rate actually make it more competitive for companies to do business here? I think what a lot of economists would say is that the corporate tax is a very bad tax. One, you have a sort of a global economy where economic activity is everywhere. You have other countries cutting their tax rates. You want to sort of incentivize uh, economic activity to be in your country. What do you want these companies to do? You want them to invest in new machinery. You want them to invest in their workers. You want them to have more profits, which then they can use to invest more. That's what you want corporations to do. You don't want corporations necessarily to be paying lots of taxes or if that's not what they're there for. If you think about it, like if you had business with a partner, you know, you and your partner would make sure that you were sitting down and eye to eye and we're trying to build the business in the same way. Well, the government, you know, does the same thing. And you're going to have a, a lot better of an experience if you understand what the government wants and you're building towards that. So what does the government want? Well, of course, it's no surprise. They want revenue, right? They want revenue. Um, they, you know, that means jobs. They need to create jobs. Um, that means people need to be working. People are working. There's income. Income equals taxes. So they want that. They want revenue. They need jobs. They need all that. They need infrastructure. They need people to be investing in technology, AI, 5G, you know, things like that, spending money into research and development, um, technology, even infrastructure like roads and bridges, a lot of that comes from private companies. And so the government wants that, the government needs that. The government needs, wants housing. People need to live somewhere. People need to rent houses, apartments, condos. And so they want housing. Um, they want investments. They need people to save for their own retirement because they need, they need you to be able to take care of yourself when you're retired but they also need for you to be able to save so you can invest into some of these other infrastructure, revenue generating, housing types of projects as well. That's what the government wants. Just like your partner, if you understand what they want, we can work together. And like I said, they give you incentives. So taxes, it's a huge hit. It's a big chunk out of my payment or out of my paycheck or my, my income, 
but you have to understand that the tax code is really written to show you what they want you to do. And it's really written in a way to give you incentives. Now, a lot of people call these loopholes and they use that in like a negative term, but you again, have to look at it a different way if you want to have success with it. And they're not loopholes. Like it's a dirty, like a bad thing. No, it's incentives. And so what happens is the government puts in the tax code and it creates incentives based around whatever their economic agenda is. So for example, when President Trump took office, he pushed through like the Trump tax cuts and it changed the way businesses um, get tax breaks and have to do the corporation. So for example, with me, um, I had been making money through like an LLC and based off of the new tax plan, I had to create a C corp and now I had to receive the money into the C corp that then paid an S corp and I had to go on payroll and I had to raise the amount of payroll that I had and I had to do all these changes to work within the new plan that meets their economic agenda, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to understand what that is and why they do that. So they're trying to boost the economy. And so in order to boost the economy, they need businesses to grow and to hire more people. And so if you do those things, they give you tax breaks. That's how it works. It's not a loophole. It's not a dirty thing. They're trying to get people to do these, these things. And I'm gonna explain more about that. But again, like I said, the government needs revenue, jobs, working. So because they need that if you start a business, you get a tax break, you get an incentive. They're incentivizing you, please go start that business and we'll give you a tax break if you do. They need infrastructure, technology. So if you invest into research and development in your company or you invest in technology, they're saying, please, we, we, we wanna be innovators. We don't wanna fall behind China. We don't wanna fall behind these other com um, countries. So we need people out there innovating. So if you spend, if you invest money into R&D, we're gonna incentivize you. We're gonna give you these, these credits, these breaks if you do that. Uh, we need housing. People need to live somewhere. If you buy a house and rent it out, we're gonna incentivize you to do that. We're gonna give you tax breaks to do that. Does that make sense? Everyone needs a place to live. We, we, need, we, need, we don't wanna fall behind China and the technology wars. We don't, you know, all these things. And so the government is incentivizing. If that makes sense, give me some thumbs up on this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know if, if, if you agree with that. But let me go ahead and finish this out. And I am gonna tell you at the end exactly how we can take advantage of this in, in our own situation. So um, the first thing, uh, the next thing I wanna say is that you're more than welcome to pay as much as you want. So I see lots of people, politicians, I see you know maybe some rich billionaires saying that we should raise taxes and, and we need to have higher taxes and all these things. And I always just think to myself, well, they're more than welcome to pay more, than, more in taxes if they want to, that's fine, right? But before we get ahead of ourselves, we should probably remember that Amazon does pay certain taxes, like state taxes, local taxes, other federal taxes, and international taxes. In a statement to CNBC, an Amazon spokesperson said, Amazon pays all the taxes we are required to pay in the US and every country where we operate, including paying 2.6 billion in corporate tax. So you can pay as much as you want, but the thing is, is that you're not legally required to pay any more than you have to, all right? So you need to figure out what am I legally required to pay? Now, I'm not talking about cheating on your taxes or lying on your taxes, do not do that. You'll go to jail, you'll go to prison. I have a friend who did. So don't do that, all right? However, understand what they're trying to incentivize you to do and do those. Do not pay more than you're obligated to pay. So that's the big thing. And when you start to look at, you know, government being your partner and what they want you to do, um, what they want me to buy, what they want me to invest, how they want me to use my business, my, my, my retirement, all those things, then all of a sudden everything starts becoming more clear. Now going back to our example of Amazon, so Amazon, again, the largest company, and I know it's polarizing, but they recently, in the last couple of months, wanted to set up a second headquarters. And, you know, second, hoarder, second headquarters will be massive. It's a, it's a huge company. Amazon has made it official. The online giant announced it's splitting its new headquarters into two locations. The company courted massive interest from hundreds of cities. Amazon today saying they are bringing at least 25,000 jobs with an average salary of $150,000. New York's governor and mayor saying the $3 billion in tax incentives they gave Amazon for an expected $27.5 billion in tax revenue would pay off big for New Yorkers. That is the highest rate of return for an economic incentive program that the state has ever offered. This certainly consolidates New York City as a great international tech hub. And so there's going to be tens of thousands of employees there and, and there's going to be lots of lots of money economic activity created and so as you might imagine lots of cities and states around the country were were competing everybody wanted amazon to set up there 
you know, um, and so in order to compete, what do they do? They incentivize them, trying to figure it out. Now, why? Why would these cities or, or, or states want them there? Well, it's because jobs, right? They know it's going to create tens of thousands of jobs. They know it's going to build infrastructure. They know it's going to create tens of billions of dollars of tax revenue. And as a matter of fact, it, uh, Amazon projected to create, they were going to create over 25,000 jobs. And they said that would be at an average of $150,000 per year salary. That's a lot of money. 25,000 jobs at an average of 150K salary. I know a lot of you guys would probably love to have 150K salary. Now, in order to get them there, the state of New York gave them incentive. Hey, we'll give you a break off of your taxes, a discount, $3 billion of tax breaks because we're expected to receive almost $30 billion in taxes. All right. They knew that it would turn the, the state of New York into this giant financial hub. And and, and that's just what's going to be coming in, um, directly. Right. Twenty five thousand jobs, thirty billion dollars in revenue directly. But what about indirectly? What about all those people, those twenty five thousand jobs, the new cars they're going to buy, the gas they're going to put in those cars, the food they're going to buy, the houses they're going to live in, you know, the addition, uh, the, the additional business that UPS and FedEx are going to get. Right. So like, think about all indirectly how much that's going to create. And, and it's hard to even imagine or, or calculate what that number is going to be. And a lot of people don't think this is going to work. And that's why this is a, kind of a politically charged debate. The tax breaks Amazon is getting, they're being rewarded for what they were going to do anyway. Because when you're a company as successful, as profitable, as cash rich as Amazon is, you make investments when you have the money to do them and when you see the need for those investments. But, but think about it in terms of other things that you already know. So think about it like uh, your local department store, they have a sale and they're like, hey, uh, save 20% if you spend $200 or more. My wife loves this. She always wants to tell me how much money she saved. And I say, no, you didn't save money. You spent money. She says, yeah, but I saved money off of what I would have spent, but maybe we didn't need that, right? So um, it's kind of the same thing. So the government incentivized them with $3 billion in discounts in order to earn $28 billion in revenue, right? Now, a lot of people, a lot of politicians, policy advisors think that, well, Amazon's so rich, they're gonna spend money either way, even if we don't give them the incentives. But just like in the store example, they'll probably just go somewhere else. So I'm going to go buy that jacket either way. If that, got, that one's going to give me a discount, I'll go buy it there. Otherwise, I might just buy it at the one closest to my house, right? So without incentives, people make different decisions, as we've seen. Breaking news, Amazon canceling its controversial plans. Now it will not build a headquarters in New York. The world's biggest company just got sent packing thanks to an unfriendly welcome by New Yorkers. Now, the city ended up driving them away. So the people got their way. They protested. How dare we give tax breaks to Amazon? Um, and so Amazon packed up and left. And with it, it took tens of thousands of jobs and tens of billions of dollars away from New York City, tax revenue. The people rejoiced, they won, but really in the long run, they lost because they lost out on that revenue. Now, my point isn't, isn't about that specific example, but my point is to understand that the, the government, the city in that case, was incentivizing Amazon to come create jobs, create tax revenue, because it would make a lot more money for them. No different than you and I would invest into something. No different than I would offer you a 20% discount at my store to get $200 of your business. And so you have to understand my point is that the, biz, that the government is your partner. Um, invest where they want you to invest, and it's going to work out a lot better for you. Now, I told you, we're going to talk about how do you put this into practical use in your own life? How can you avoid taxes, avoid paying as much as you have to in taxes, or avoid overpaying in taxes, we should say. So how do you put this into practice in your own life? Well, depends, right? Like, like a lot of things, it depends, right? So if you're an employee, if you're a contractor, if you're a business owner, a small business owner, a large business owner, um, an investor, there's lots of different ways to earn money. And there's lots of different ways to reduce your taxable income and write off income and stuff. But for the for the most part, everybody can just try and reduce their um, taxable income, right? So regardless, if you're, if you're an employee, investor, business owner, whatever, we can all work to reduce our taxable income. Now, if you're an employee, you don't have very many um, options. So that's kind of the worst place to be. You don't have a lot of options, but you can still do it. So you can take some of your money and you can invest it into some tax 
free um, tax incentivized accounts, 401ks, IRAs, things like that. And basically, you, you know, you make $50,000 a year, you take 10,000, put it into one of these um, qualified accounts, and you reduce your income from 50 down to 40,000. And now you're only paying tax on 40, not 50. So you can reduce your taxable income. Everybody could do that. Now, the next thing that you could do is you can start a business again, right? The, the government wants people to start businesses. So start a business, it can be a side business, a side hustle, a hobby business. And once you have that business, you can set up a little S corp or a little LLC. And again, I'm not your tax professional, so go advise one, but you could set up this business and then potentially write off a part of your house payment, your rent payment, your car payment, your phone, phone bills, electricity. And now all of a sudden you can create all these expenses that you're already paying right now and take them off of your taxable income because you can write them off towards the business. Now, the business doesn't have to make money. As a matter of fact, most of these big companies today, even that we're seeing like Uber and Lyft and WeWork, they don't even make money and they create a loss. So now this business has a loss that then can be carried forward just like Amazon's done. What you can also do is you can invest your earned income, now, depending on what kind of status you can qualify for. But as a, you know, as a professional investor, I can take my earned income and invest it. So I'm not paying tax on that. And then I can then borrow against those investments, which is debt. And that's not a taxable event. Or I can take passive income, which is taxed a lot lower. So you have earned income, which could be 30 to up to 50%, or you have passive income, which could be only 15 or 20%. It's about half, half or even less than half. So I can take the earned income instead of paying high tax on that, invest it, and then live off debt, which is tax-free, or live off the passive income, which is taxed at a much lower rate. Now, that's a pretty advanced strategy. Definitely meet with a tax professional if you think you can qualify for that type of a thing. And another area that we see all the time, it's, it's kind of a new thing that's happened over the last couple of years, is these opportunity, opportunity zones. So if you live in the United States, you know, there's lots of areas all throughout the United States that the government has designated as opportunity zones. Now, these are areas that they've designated that they want to grow economic activity. And again, so because that's what they want, if you go start a business there, or buy a building there, they give you massive, massive tax incentives to do that all the way up to potentially paying no tax at all. So that's because they want to grow those areas. So look at these opportunity zones. So these are all practical areas that you could do this in your own life right now. And it's possible to either one, greatly reduce your taxes or potentially get them all the way down to zero. But again, this is not tax advice. I highly recommend you go talk to a qualified tax professional, depending on how much money you have and how intricate you want to be, you may want to go get yourself a really good tax professional. I mean, I, I spend about $30,000 a year just for tax planning, strategic tax planning. That's not including the filing and all that. Um, but that's because I have a lot of stuff going on and it saves me way more than that. So, you know, I'm spending money to do that, but I'm making way more back because I'm, in, I'm, I'm using all the incentives that are available to me and you can do the same thing. Just make sure you find yourself a good tax professional. Um, yeah, it's expensive, but again, it's about making money back. It's about that return on your investment. If you like that, if you wanna reduce your taxes to zero or, or close to zero, give me some thumbs up on this video. If you don't like the video for whatever reason, give me a thumbs down, but either way, let me know. Leave me a message in the comments. I love to hear from each and every one of you every single week. I love to talk to you guys. And that's it. To your success, I'm out.